Uh, Ito, you a big Vice news reader? <laughs> um, I've wa- more watched their like internet videos than like read their news. But what are you, uh, what, what are you trying to get at here? Well, Vice News has somehow become my go-to source for just like white nonsense news. Makes sense. Yes. I honestly, I feel like they should sponsor this segment, the Mayo Report. But you know, we'll we'll build to there. Right. But yeah, today. On Vice News, we got this gem. Ron DeSantis introduced the Stop Woke Act and name dropped MLK. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, what? Okay, that is a lot to process. I, I think I would like to start in what entails the Stop Woke Act here. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is just the latest. And for those who aren't familiar with uh, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, who's been, who's clearly trying to run for president and has just decided, I'm going to go all the way in on all this critical race theory fear mongering. Mm-hmm. So this is the latest in his efforts. And want to want to read the acronym. Uh, according to Vice News. Alongside students and a prominent right-wing anti-critical race theory activist, DeSantis on Wednesday introduced the Stop the Wrongs to Our Kids and Employees Act. Wow, okay. That is... Kids and employees... This is interesting. <laughs> you know, you, you, you tell history correctly, and people get real, real up in arms about it real fast. Oh, very. I mean, and that's... That's the funniest part about it. like I was watching a video last night talking about another school board. Uh, I should shout out uh, Kim Foster for Harriet because I really do recommend that. Mm-hmm. But you know, she was talking about how the weird dynamic of these school board discussions is that you have these people who supposedly like seem you know normal and level headed up Correct. until like you said. You start mentioning race and racism, Uh and then it turns to get out real quickly. Very quickly, correct. I get it, though, just because, like, I grew up in Lake Oswego, Oregon. Those who don't know, you know, nickname Lake No Negro, Oregon, and it it earned that nickname. So I'm pretty pretty used to this, where you could be the person who, you know, you see someone at the grocery store, like, hi, hello, you know, how... What do you think about the Blazers last night? All these, you know, benign... Simple conversations. Exactly. But you, again, you mention race. You mention racism. And they just turn into these pathological, like, cartoon characters. (laughs) I, without fail. I mean, I remember uh, going to these pickup games and I had this Malcolm X t-shirt one day. It's like, guy, I've seen been on a team with countless times or whatever but sees the t-shirt is just like oh you're that was a bad guy wasn't it you know in oh, that goodness in that way that's just like where they're trying to be polite but not <laughs> 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 and it's uh yeah it's just like it just sets people off but at the same time that is that's what makes it work if that makes sense that because it's packaged so, you know, you have someone like Ron DeSantis who will come do this press conference, you know, this suit, everything is official. It's the governor. You have these people who come to school board meetings and, you know, in a calm voice, they will, you know, tell you that the vaccine is going to turn them into, you know, dinosaurs. Like, yeah, dinosaurs, some three headed beast or something. Right. But, they do it politely. They do it as if it's just like a matter of fact. Right. And like, it's like we react to that just like as a society. Like, it's normal. It's, it's fine. It's not right. really a threat because, you know, the thing that worries me more so than, you know, the people going and like terrorizing school board meetings or city councils and all that is those are just... Like, those are the people who are willing to put their faces behind this. Right. You, you always need the, you know, frontline soldiers mm-hmm. in any, you know, movement or whatever. But there's also, you know, the quote-unquote silent majority. There's Correct. people who tell you that they are quote-unquote allies who are also 
not exactly averse to the idea of not talking about race so much. Of course, yes. And what you see, especially because most of this, as far as just like the mobilizing of it, is happening in places where there's, you know, not the critical mass or not the big enough amount of people of color to Mm -hmm. push back or the big enough amount of just, I guess, progressive justice minded people to push back. And because that's still the majority of the country or still the majority, at least uh, electorally, every time we watch these maps of big, you know, red swaths of land where like 10 people live. So you have this happening with, you know, little or very quiet pushback in places. And what that tells me is that's consent. That is saying Mm -hmm. this is okay. Or, you know, at least like we are best case scenario, the, you know, people who consider themselves allies in these places are like, you know, this is bad, but they scare me. So I'm just going to sit here and, we're just going to let it happen and see what happens. And right. I, I don't hear enough other people complaining, so I guess it can't be that bad, right? Exactly. And then, boom, you have policies. Because it's not like this is just, you know, people doing press conferences or proposing bills. There actually have been. Let me let me check here. Because there's a number. I want to say nine states Wow. have passed. Uh, Yeah. Or no, nine others. Yeah, 10 states have passed some kind of legislation banning critical race theory, even though it wasn't being taught in the first place. Wow. Which is wild for a variety of reasons, Mm -hmm. obviously. But because one, how are you going to attack a thing that doesn't actually exist in your schools? But also, if I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt, you're preemptively attacking a thing that would actually be helpful. It would actually yeah. be good for kids to have some of this knowledge, right? I would I would say so, 100%. Let me bring it back to DeSantis though because the other part of this, you know, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be an attack on critical race theory and racism without quoting Dr. King. Oh, here we go. Here you we know, go. This, again, according to the story, you think about what MLK stood for, DeSantis said. He said he didn't want people judged on the color of their skin, but uh, on the content of their character. Uh, you listen to some of these people nowadays. They don't talk about that, DeSantis said to applause. Uh, applause? Oh, of course, because he was surrounded, you know, by a bunch of fans and other, you know, I call them zealots, but, you know, we'll just call them constituents. Yes, yes, yes. Supporters. Uh, maybe I'm just a... Uh, Maybe this is just me being nitpicky here, but like if you're going to misappropriate, misappropriate MLK, can you at least pick different quotes? Right. It's always the same. Well, Martin Luther King says, don't judge people on the color of their skin, but the content of their care. Like they never, ever choose a different quote. That's, never. I'm just asking for like, be creative. There were other there were other places like we, we've used the same like five MLK quotes for the history of time. Like. He said other things. Yeah. And, you know, I'm I'm not going to do this very often, but this is one thing that, you know, I feel like Donald Trump had going for him is that he was <laughs> he was creative. He was he brought like new things and new phrases to the racism. Like he really he spiced it up. He was about his creative racism. I'll give you that 100%. And like I, I think it was totally an accident because he clearly just says whatever just like farts out of his mouth. Yeah, he just but, be talking. But you know, again, he would he would spin you a new phrase. He would he would give you, and I'm pretty sure that's what helped you know win the thing. Like, yes, he's you know gives a voice to all the people who just want to say this stuff out loud. Right. But you know, he made in a weird way he. He made the white supremacy exciting. <laughs> that is a interesting way to put it, but I, yeah, it, yeah, I, I see what you were saying. He made it. He made the white supremacy um a little bit more like I don't know. He was original about it. He was original about his white supremacy, 
which means that I guess he was the most, at least when it comes to the political side, he was the most like forefront with his white supremacy. He was just like actually racist instead of like jumping around the racism mm-hmm. and all of that. Like he, he would have just, if he could have, he would have said slurs live on television. Yeah. I mean, you know, you hear that uh, cliche that constraints like build creativity because you got to work around them and figure it out. Right. And I mean, to again, this is a very long praise by me of Donald Trump. Don't get used to this. People watching this. I don't even know if I would call this a praise as much as you just acknowledging how he uh, tricked white Americans into voting for him. Yeah. So. I mean, I guess I'll give DeSantis that, too, that he's, you know, because all these politicians are trying to be bootleg Trumps. And it's cartoonish, but for that said, it is real. Like I said, there's, you got 10 states who pass legislation. You right. have, I mean, even here, you know, they say Oregon is a liberal bastion. Not really. No. It's, you know, we're in Portland, which is kind of a... Uh, how would you put it? It's in its own little bubble uh-huh. here. And then there's, there's a lot of... Oregon is very red. Oregon is very red besides Portland. Even, I would say, going to school... I went to school in Beaverton, which is very close to Portland. In having to deal with attempting to fight for critical race theory, like it was a difficulty there with school boards. I think recently my local school district even had a very racist like person heading the board so it's like it, it it's it's kind of everywhere like it's very much so like something that they're trying to fight against they don't want critical race theory in schools even in places that are so-called liberal yeah i mean not even just critical race theory just literally any mention of, of race, race. <laughs> exactly so with that said what so what do i prescribe because i can you know sit here and talk about how Ron DeSantis is a clown right? and how all these people are just on some goofy stuff, going to meetings, organizing, but you know, it is a real problem. So first and foremost, support, if not run for a school board, we need progressive candidates out there who True. aren't afraid to fight back against these people who aren't afraid to not just fight back because you don't want to be on the defensive, but also push policies like gasp, but push for critical race theory in schools. <gasps> I'm just going to throw that out there. It's, oh my God. I know. Don't, don't tell anybody. It's you gotta keep this under wraps. Keep it on the DL. You know, push for policies, not just critical race theory, but like policies that actually protect the children. Right. Because oftentimes when we do this, We talk about it from a framework of just, like, educating white people, but, you know, there are actual, like, black, brown children that are Are in these classrooms. Yeah. And they're dealing with stuff both in the curriculum and also just, like, clearly physical threats to their safety and Mm well-being. And we need to dedicate some actual resources to that. And then, you know, if you have the ability to monitor school board meetings even especially now in these pandemic times where you can do it online and it's easier than ever do that. Just keep an eye on these things, assign people. If you're in an organization, I strongly suggest getting, becoming a part of an organization, assign some people to do it. You can even make it fun, make it sit at home, have some drinks. I guarantee you, you will hear some, like even before this time, you will hear wild things. Very much. So it is actually weirdly entertaining. It's, it's kind of a form of reality. I mean, it is reality TV, literally. But yes. you can trust me. I know it's like watch watch the school board. Uh, when I could do anything else with my day, when I'm done with work, why would I do that? You will be entertained. But then also, lastly, continue to clown these people. I know absolutely. I know I'm out here trying to give like uh, other tangible, more productive. Uh, prescriptions but also make fun of these people in the way they deserve like let's let's not lie to ourselves this is oh think about how much time ron desantis actually spent coming up with that acronym it's like make sure i say woke but what what woke what can i what 
what uh wrong okay how about maybe no let me put something before that stop woke yes yes stop the 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 wrongs to to um to yeah, over oh our our that's it our kids but it's got to be more than that our kids and employees wrongs our kids employ woke i did it got it <laughs> i i'd say he but he he had an assistant or like an intern he has a team we we have to understand that like there is a team of people behind this who cleared woke hmm. as the this acronym for woke they cleared this grown people yeah a, a whole team of people had to work on that and i'm not gonna lie that's hilarious to me there's no way it's not hilarious to <laughs> it's me it's very funny <laughs> Like I'm, you know, I'm excited. The the Boondocks is supposed to be getting rebooted in next year. Oh, I'm excited. But also, I'm like, how how is it going to work? Like, real life is clearly out outpacing satire. What do you do with this? How by the time you get to like February or March, whenever this comes out, how are you going to be able to satirize this? when life is already comedy man so what we're gonna see but in the meantime you know you've got people saying these things out loud putting it in writing and as a journalist i was taught that you know you hold people accountable for these things in in a fair world i'd feel pretty embarrassed to come outside after doing a press conference about the stop woke act but that's yeah. me personally. And I, I have the belief that we should all do our part to really make sure people are self-conscious and have some shame Agreed. over just, just being this stupid out loud. Uh -huh. That's all. That's all. This has been the Mayo Report. <laughs>